Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be looking at the best brushes in Krita for beginners and I'll explain why I've chosen those. If you like what I do then check the playlist on the channel for other tutorials which are in order and check the links in the description for courses related to this one. Also keep an eye out for my new learning to draw creating game art which I'm working on and will be available soon. Okay so there's a plethora of brushes in Krita which offer you so many different things and capabilities. If you want to know what all the brushes do then I suggest this graphic which shows the default brushes for 4.0 and it's by, by DVAD on DeviantArt. And we can zoom into this and it gives a nice breakdown of what you need the different brushes for. However, that can still be quite daunting for beginners. And there's a common question that really good artists on YouTube often get asked and that's what brushes are you using? As if that's some sort of quick way of becoming really good at art. Well, that's just not the case. And all you need is just a few brushes especially as a beginner, stick to these brushes and you'll do well. So I'm going to talk about the brushes that you need as a beginner. So if you need a reminder, B is the shortcut for brush and the icon for the brush is over here and we can start painting. I'll change my brush to black so it's easier to see what's going on. So the main brushes I use are the three across here. So the basic six details, basic five size and opacity and basic five size. I'll start with this one and I think you should start all your sketches with this brush the basic six details, and I'll explain why. So let's say we're sketching out, and I'll draw a simple face. I can be really sketchy with this brush. I can draw lightly for nice thin lines, as you can see here, or I can push hard for thicker lines with more ink. It also builds as you draw over the top of it by offering more and more ink like this. And as a beginner, you want a brush like that that slowly builds and you can draw lightly to start off with and build up as you slowly discover the painting and your confidence builds in the strokes that you've put down. It mimics a pencil quite closely, so the more you push, the more ink or lead comes out, or graphite even. And most artists will put down a base layer like this, unless they're really amazing. Um, but for me, I have to put down a base layer like this and then go over the top of it. Just as a quick reminder, you might want to have your hand over the E key for the eraser and of course the undo key just in case you make a mistake not that I've made any mistakes here of course so I'll just do a quick sketch here and of course this is sped up I'm not this quick uh, and it's very rough but it's kind of to show you that this is a brush that I use all the time when starting my sketches and that's why I would thoroughly recommend it for you too so I've managed to build up a simple sketch there and of course it's far from perfect but I'm moving quickly through this so that's the basic five brush and it's great for starting your sketches for three reasons, it builds up really nicely. It works with your pen pressure in both opacity and size. So it's a great brush for both beginners and advanced levels. Now a good brush if you want to do characters a bit like the one on the left hand side here, which I think is good for beginners because you can practice your strokes and you can overlay your sketches with this type of brush. And it gives a nice outline, which is a good way of drawing characters if you're a beginner. And that's the basic five size brush. And if I draw with this, it's got a nice smooth feel to it. And if I go up to the top here to tool options, you can see it has got some brush smoothing on it. So your brush gives a nice smooth stroke like this. So it can help with your inking lines. Also, it's pressure sensitive to do with the size. So the harder I push, the more ink comes out. And that's perfect for beginner inking. So if I come to my character, I can do this on a new layer or go over the old layer, but we can build up with some nice brush strokes over our model. Like I say, this is a particular style, but I think it's a good style for beginners to use where you draw in the outline of your character or whatever it might be, and then you can choose a new layer and color underneath it. It's very sort of comic book, cartoony style, but I think it's a useful one. And we can thicken some lines up, maybe in the shadows, under the eyes, for example. Or we can have nice thin strokes for things like the hair, which works nicely. Okay, so what about the other brush, the one in the middle? The basic five size opacity. Well, I quite like this one for shading or coloring. So let's do some basic coloring for our character here. I'll create a new layer and put it underneath them. I'll put these layers into a group so you can see them and I'll give them some names. So there's my ink layer, my sketch layer underneath that, which often I keep around for a while, but you can change the opacity to that and then the color underneath that. So let's choose a skin color. Maybe we'll go for a slightly more olive color this time using this brush and paint in the color. So I'm doing it really rough. I always start off fairly rough with these things and then tidy them up a bit later on. That's my style, you can have a cleaner style than that. What I like about this brush is that it builds, so slowly your color comes out. And for the moment, for the base color, it doesn't matter. 
and I could have used the inking brush for this. But if I bring down the opacity, I maybe wanted to put some shadows in here. So go to a slightly darker color, maybe a little bit more contrasty in there and had some shadows in here. Maybe the light's coming from this direction. And just some shadows coming under here, around there, underneath the hair. We can build that up. So if I keep pushing and pushing and pushing, it slowly builds up. And we could do the same with some highlights. And if I push lightly, less ink comes out. And we can bring the opacity down further and blend a little bit more. If you want to find out more about blending, then look at my video on just that. And we've got some basic blending there, but I don't want to spend too long on this. Now, if you want a character more like the one on the left here, then I'm going to hide that color layer and create a new one. And I'd use the basic five size, my inking brush as I call it, for that. So let's choose a color. And with that inking brush, I'll fill in, just block it in like this, nice and rough. Then we can have a darker color to show the shadows. We can just have one tone of shading like this and just shade those darker areas in. Assuming the light's coming from this direction. Okay, so that's pretty rough, but hopefully you get the idea. And then some highlights, of course. I like this approach for beginners where you have just three tones because you're thinking more about the structure of the face than you are trying to blend the colors together. So that makes the inking brush quite good for beginners when they're shading. When you're used to the inking brush, then you can go across to the other shading brush that I talked about earlier. Now one more brush as you become a little bit more advanced and you want to build up that shading is the airbrush. It's a really nice soft brush. So if I create an area over here and just draw in a ball, I'll start off by just filling it in with a base color and then back to my brush with the airbrush, nice and big, all the way to black. And you can see it's a beautiful soft brush. We can change the opacity right down, make it really big and it's good for shading things like spheres or anything round, cylindrical. Then I'll go across the whites and put some white in there. And maybe I'll bring the opacity down a bit more and put in some floor reflection, assuming this was on the floor anyway. So that's the airbrush and it's really, really nice for when you want to push to the next level of shading. Okay, so that's the basic brushes for beginners, those three basic paint brushes and the airbrush for a bit more advanced shading. And I still work with those the most when I'm drawing now. And my recommendation to you is to just use those to start off with and then slowly start introducing other brushes, experimenting with them, seeing what they're like. To be honest, I still use these four brushes for about 98% of my work. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope this helps and I'll see you next time.